The world is changing at breathtaking speeds, with trends and fads popping up and passing away at breakneck pace. Against that backdrop of nearly constant upheaval, we welcome you to the Sunday Scotch Society. Over delectable, sumptuous scotches and with the occasional good cigar in hand, we have open, honest, and uninhibited conversation about whatever strikes our fancy. Whether it's the critical issue of the day or a deep dive down the rabbit hole, we take it all seriously while having a good time. Join us for a stiff drink and a great conversation. Good day to you all. Welcome to uh, the Sunday Scar Society. Today I am uh, joined as usual by uh, my partner in crime and uh, my partner in, I won't call it necessarily uh, keto acidosis, but uh, nor will I call it the paleo diet necessarily, but my partner in a search for uh, our speedo bodies, uh, a search for um, a six pack or an eight pack or whatever pack is appropriate at the appropriate time, uh, Mr. Matthew Kelly. Matthew. Good day to you, sir. Uh, I will not fall into the trap Good. this time and answer you uh, in a British accent because... Oh, very good. Then you'll wrong foot me once again. Um, and Matthew and I are joined today by... Um, Matthew, I'll let you introduce, or, or at least lay the foundation for who is joining us today. Well, today, boys and girls, we have such a treat for you. <laughs> a very good friend of mine, very spicy attitude, and overall individual. <clears throat> it is my pleasure to introduce you to a business partner of mine with whom I could talk shop all day long, but we are not going to today. She has no idea what this conversation is going to be about, <clears throat> as it should be. Uh, but she is a master around pricing, branding. I often go to her uh, for advice in my own uh, crafting of the final part of story, which you know I, I just love. So suffice it to say, she's someone who I implicitly trust, but outside of her craft, she has some very interesting opinions and an experience uh, in the Bahamas that I really, really, really want to dig into today. Um, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I am actually very pleased to give you Shana Edgecombe. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, welcome. Uh, welcome me to the show. I appreciate it. Um, Scared me a little bit because I don't know what we're talking about today, but I'm ready. Let's get into it. <clears throat> oh, the, uh, the, ladies and gentlemen, Shana, as you are by now perfectly well aware, is uh, quite uh, direct and uh, forthright uh, in a way that is, is I think, almost unusual. In, in, in our community, where we are fond of hiding how we feel or think in the name of manners or in the name of decency and good order, uh, which is not to say that Shana is indecent or disorderly, uh, but it is to say that I find her uh, forthrightness and directness refreshing. Uh, I think she's also quite brilliant, uh, and as a result, I was excited uh, at the opportunity to have her join us for uh, what, a, what I assume will be a, a wide-ranging and interesting conversation. Uh, the, the fact is, 
we will also be uh, enjoying uh, the probably the best known Canadian whiskey. Um, most people who drink it probably don't even think of it as Canadian, but it is sort of the, the height of the Canadian whiskey experience today. Uh, it is Crown Royal, uh, the, uh, the fine deluxe, which is like their classic uh, Crown Royal expression. And um, I, I'm a huge fan of Crown. Um, it's, it is unfortunately frequently uh, called, you know, it, it used as a mixer in a Crown and Coke sort of situation or Crown and Ginger. Uh, but today, on uh, the Secret Scotch Society, uh, Sunday, the Sundays. Well, if, it, if it, I guess we don't really want it to be a secret, do we? No. Not anymore. Not anymore. Fine. Today, on the Sunday Scotch Society, uh, the Crown Royal, in all its fine, uncut uh, glory, is <laughs> our tipple of the day. And uh, Matthew, I, I, I begin as usual with a question about the nose. What? What are you thinking uh, about the nose for this uh, this wonderful thing? Hmm. <clears throat> that is. It's got a lot of caramel. Mm -hmm. Um. It's more alcohol forward than I thought it would be. <clears throat> And uh, I think that's lending to what my brain thinks of as rose, perhaps just from tinctures that I've encountered in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Other than that, I'm not, I'm not getting much more. I don't know if I'm off today. Well, I mean, we'll find uh, out. We'll find out when we taste it, I guess. Uh, to our guest, uh, Ms. Shana Edgecombe, what, what, are you, what are you getting off the nose? Upon first whip. Mm. I was reminded of my daddy and my grandfather. Oh. Wow, okay. <laughs> Nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Upon second deep whiff, it burned my nose hairs. <laughs> 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 okay. So yes, very alcohol forward. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, I, I agree with the, obviously, the alcohol forwardness of it. But um, there, and I, 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 I agree with you, Matthew, on the caramel, but there's also a, a very subtle fruitiness I get as well. Um, and it's weird if I really get my nose, really get you know down in there. Uh, I know it's tough for Shana, whose nose hairs have already been burned off. <laughs> but I feel like there's almost a hint of... It's weird, but I feel like a hot chocolate kind of scent or mm. aroma or, or something like that. There's something that has that rich chocolatiness that's really deep in the background of the nose. I, it's weird, but... That's good. Upon third like sniff, mm -hmm. my chest is burning. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, have, we have yet to sip <clears throat> uh, this tipple. Uh, and the dipsomaniacs among us are excited, but the teetotalers among us, <clears throat> I'm calling them and pointing their fingers, have already made their position very clear. <laughs> but, uh, but, so, but Matthew here, let, let's, let's find out. Oh, and ladies and gentlemen, Matthew brought in tulip glasses today, and um, we'll put some some photographs up on the, on the website, but. Uh, you should see these things. This is what scotch is meant to be drunk from. And it's quite a delight to actually have them in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the Sunday Scotch Society. Fancy. Matthew ruminates and goes down whatever that face is that looks like a deep dive type of face. Uh, the the payoff 
for the the sip, the first sip, is the vanilla is definitely there. The that thing that I thought of as hot chocolate is maybe a little oak, uh, maybe a little woodiness. That's that's there for me as well. Um, it's not as fruity as I would have thought. Um, given the, given the first sort of blush of fruitiness from the nose, it's a it's a little less fruity and a lot a lot less sweet than I anticipated. Um, it, the alcohol is definitely there. Uh, so you know this is. Hmm. I have a feeling this is one that's going to open up the, the the longer the longer we we linger with it though. But right at first blush, uh, it's the alcohol, it's the oak, it's maybe a little bit of the vanilla. For me, anyway. <clears throat> I'm catching some toffee notes. I don't know if that's what you're picking up as that chocolate, but that's very adjacent for me. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> man, on swallow, that had a bite. But it just went away mm -hmm. almost immediately. I thought the I thought the finish was gonna, you know, be quite harsh. But it, you know, it just went away, and was, I just have uh, tingly lips at the moment. Yeah, well, there you go. That's that's. Uh, I'm not sure what is happening here, but I can't wait to really start videotaping uh, the show because <laughs> Shanna is. I just think I smelled the bite that you were talking about. <laughs> That's what I meant. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so Shana has, has uh, most graciously agreed to actually smell the nose, even though she's a teetotaler, so she will not be partaking of the actual sips with us. Mm -hmm. uh, but she seems to be deriving much enjoyment from our, well, her, uh, our faces. Her, yeah, her, her, she was glued to your face. She, was like, <laughs> she wanted to make sure she caught all the nuance there. <laughs> what did you see, Shana, from that, that close examination? Curiosity, the bite, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then oh, okay. You know what it reminds me of, and this is my unsophisticated nose. It's like a, it has a smoother, almost Campari smell. Mm. I know it's a little bit. Mm. Those are two very different things. Okay. But they also remind me of my grandfather, mm -hmm. Campari. Um, okay. Very different. I know how Campari tastes. I'm not sure how this tastes on its own. <laughs> but but you are. I mean, you, you know. could do the one of the classic crab royal pairings if you were My so. My ginger ale is done. I'm sorry. My ginger ale is done. Okay. And the last time I accidentally drank alcohol, my chest burned for a few hours after. Oh. So no. <clears throat> The questions that will no doubt um, frame the conversation that we're having are uh, are going to come from both Matthew and I, uh, Chana. But uh, in terms of why we thought you would be um, a, a good conversation. For, for this uh, this arena, I'll, uh, I'll let Matthew tell you, but uh, I, I agree with him 100%, hint, hint. Uh, so, Matthew, if you would be kind enough to clue our uh, heretofore clueless guest into why she is uh, a coveted uh, get for the Sunday Scotch Society. Your frankness, particularly around, particularly around the relationship space Gosh. in the Bahamas, which is something you are not unaccustomed to commenting on, not just in the private circles, but publicly, which is why uh, I would ask for your opinions on certain things um, and being out of the dating game for, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> apparently I don't know what it's like, I can't know what it's like, 
And according to Shauna, I never really dated. Period. <laughs> um, I, there's a lot to unpack there, Matthew. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to stay away from it until you finish this thing. So, so what I really wanted to, 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 to talk to about, and there are myriad other subjects that, that I would find your takes fascinating on, but we're probably only going to get to relationships today. Um, let me start by saying that before the podcast began, you related, I'm going to be as euphemistic as possible here, mm -hmm. you related a story about something a gentleman said to you mm -hmm. regarding Sam Bankman Freed mm -hmm. and how it was that he committed one of the if not the hugest fraud in the history of planet Earth. Nice. Mm -hmm. would, would, would you mind, with, <laughs> no. with, with the same vigor, <laughs> to, to repeat what you said? Yeah, it was why, not how. It was the why. Mm -hmm. And essentially it was, he did all of that because he had a crush on a woman and he was feeding her money to make investments. I guess in trying to perhaps win her over, but he overextended himself mm -hmm. um, because she was not making good investments. And my response to that is twofold. One, where is his accountability? Because he was the one moving the money. He was the one as the CEO and the leader of the company. Um, that was his decision to make. It wasn't even like he was authorizing other people. He was doing it, mm -hmm. whether in the name of love or pure foolishness, whatever. Secondly, there is this notion held by some, and I, I say heavily some, of the opposite sex that... O opposite to which gender in the room? Opposite to my sex. Okay. Meaning some men hold that women are weak, they're not to be equals, etc., etc. But when it comes to situations where bad things happen, oh, she made me do it. I am a victim. I fell into the hands of a woman. And so my question becomes, which is it? Are we weak? Are we powerful? Is there a versus? Is there both? How do we become, <laughs> on one hand, almost powerless and useless? On the other hand, we can bring a whole kingdom down. Okay, so let me play the devil's advocate here. Please. Could it be that this person was saying that and, and I assume that you know them to hold these views about, about women's weakness or, or not weakness in certain situations. Could it be that they were saying women are weak in this context of uh, strength, of defense, of toting a, a table up the mm -hmm. stairs, mm -hmm. but that they are pow powerful psychologically? No. No. Okay. Why that? That's just not the belief. That's not the belief. Okay. Sorry, yeah. what? So tease it apart for me. Uh, like what? How? What, how is it that they are? If it's not that they, it's not the same context. Yeah. How is it that you think they are conceptualizing this, and mm -hmm. how are they able? Which is not necessarily a bad thing to hold these two opposing ideas in their minds at once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I just think, and, and he's not the only person. I see it a lot online, you know, hear conversations in person. Um, there is a lack of accountability, I think, on both sides. Um, so that's a deep issue within itself. That's just a deep conversation. That's a rabbit hole. That is a slippery slope. That is Mount Everest. <laughs> I'm sorry, we we got very epic all of a sudden. 
um, can we let's let's de-escalate? Yes. Let's go back down the mountain. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm not sure I understand why it is such a slippery slope. The sad when I bring up accountability, it has so many implications just on how we relate to each other or don't relate to each other, how we see each other, good and bad, um, how there's almost like a one-upping at times of, well, men have it worse, but women have it worse, or who's at fault for this? Who's at fault for the breakdown of the family? Who's at fault for the breakdown between men and women? Who's at fault? And it's, it's, it's just a lot. Okay, so from my not in the game, mm-hmm. very safe, 30,000 foot view, tell me, right, how is, from my perspective, right, what I see when I do see this conversation or uh, what people think is a conversation, um, and yes, that means that I think that it doesn't amount to one. It's just people shouting at each other or past each other. Uh, what I see is children squabbling in the front yard, backyard, schoolyard, and just being generally immature. Is this anything more than that? Or are there some real core issues that are happening here that, that need to be addressed? Other than people need to grow the up. (laughs) Both? (laughs) Can I say that there are both? (laughs) I think that there are foundationally some very real breakdowns. Um, But, you know, like earlier today, I was reading um, an Instagram comments on a post and... It was talking about how, um, and this this may be very divisive, what I'm about to say, but I'm literally just talking about what the people were talking about. Okay. Okay, just to give context. They were talking about how in the black American culture, at least, they appear to be one of the only sets of people who talk about... Um, 50-50 and the gender roles not really having gender roles, right? Okay. And how in other societies, other cultures, there are clearly defined expectations on both sides. What a man does, what a woman does. And so in the comments, a gentleman was saying that the breakdown of all this falls squarely on women because women are the ones who set the standard in the society. So if the women are the ones saying, you don't need to have a job, you could still be my boyfriend, my husband. I could still have kids with you. You don't need to bring anything. You don't need to add to me. You don't need to have yourself together. You don't need to... I hate this term, bring anything to the table. You don't need to, (laughs) you know, add anything. And so they were saying that if, you know, a woman realizes that a man is not adding anything, but she's still choosing to move forward with him, that is the reason for the breakdown. And even, and I was very curious, y'all, because I love reading comments just to get perspectives. And there were even some men who were like, sir, how are you going to blame this squarely on the woman when it takes two, number one, and if you're also going to say that a man should lead, then how is it that <laughs> you take away that responsibility from him in this instance? So it's just, it's a lot. And then one thing I want people to remember too is social media can be an echo chamber, meaning the algorithm will show you what you keep clicking on. It will put you down a rabbit hole and you could think that everyone is this or everyone is that and that's really not the case. It's literally what you click on and it keeps feeding you that type of stuff. So you could easily have this misperception 
of people that's not true. So, Matthew, I know you have fans. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's an underlying philosophical assertion beneath what you have said, uh, Shanna, that I would love to get your take on, right? Uh, and that underlying assertion, that underlying belief is that sex or the pursuit of sex is the motivating factor for behavior between men and women. The man who said to you, women are the ones who set the standard in society. What he meant was, women are the ones who tell men what kind of behavior is acceptable if they want to have sex. That's essentially, I think he also did say that. Women are the gatekeepers of sex. And if women are the gatekeepers of sex in the view of both men and women in this society, Mm -hmm. then it is ultimately the sex or the pursuit of sex that is considered, that whether you consider it or not, is clearly the highest goal in, in in our community. Uh, whether that is as a matter of, you know, uh, evolution and a, and, a, and, a, and a need to procreate for the, the the extension of the race or the species, whatever you want to call it, or whether that is because we have uh, somehow elevated the sexual act to the pinnacle of personal experience and fulfillment. Um, I, I, I guess I'm curious about how you see that philosophical and very real, because it's not just philosophy, it's, it is how people set their agendas. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, 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 I have a lot that I want to ask about it, but I, I thought I'd, I'd leave that out there for your, mm-hmm. your thoughts. I would say he and lie <laughs> in, in the most simple terms, right? If we are the barometer, if we do provide the access, then it is us who gets to say, well, you are or aren't good enough, to be honest, whatever good enough is, right? Whatever the factors are. Um, I think to our detriment, we in general, and when I say we, because I, I'm mindful that I have a Western view, number one, because there are many other parts of the world where women do not have agency over their body. And when her husband or her whoever, or someone, even a stranger, Um, wants to have sex, it will happen. Not always with her consent. So I'm very mindful that I have a Western view. And so we're having that in this context. Um, But I do think that especially with the advent of social media being so accessible, And then, you know, again, we're having real conversation, what you can watch and you have easy access to that is no longer just in print. You can literally pull up a phone and go on a website. And then also you add in um, celebrity culture and what's feeding and driving some of us. There's a whole lot going on that just makes it top of mind and seem accessible, easily. Is it, if, if, if what we're saying is real, mm-hmm. does that mean that the men are in charge? In what context you mean, if we're the ones who are the gatekeepers, mm-hmm. doesn't mean that the men are in charge. Because the remember now there's a whole vibe in this community right this is a severely churched society and 
<laughs> in this <laughs> Savelli Church <laughs> Society, uh, the the rule is that the man is the head of the house. Um, every preacher will tell you the man could be the head, but the woman is the neck, and she'll turn the head any way she wants, right? But this outside of the church walls, this is a matriarchal society. Grammy is the head of practically every family. Well, not practically every, but the majority of families, right? Um, if all, if what is underlying our societal actions and interactions is the men auditioning for sex mm -hmm. with the women, are the men in charge? Are the men in charge of parliament? The society. Are the men in charge of parliament? They are the ones who are the law lawmakers. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who but that, is that real legislate. Power? <laughs> it's real power when, as an example, and lawmakers don't necessarily say this, but as an example, when sexual assaults happen and the police tell the women that they are the ones who need to take precautions, that they are the ones who need to change their behaviors, that they are the ones who need to essentially guard against sexual assault. A woman is not necessarily going to tell another woman that because she understands the nuances and certain things. It's a lot of it, the men who are saying that. Um, it's the men who are writing the bills. It's the men who, and again, me saying, looking at our parliament and the number of women compared to the number of men. Um, with gender violence bills and things of that nature. I mean, it's majority men. So there are some perspectives that will always be drowned out. That's just my perspective. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I'm just thinking that this does not, this does not contradict my feeling that this is a maturity issue which um, brings on its own next level sets of issues when you're talking about it on a society-wide level. I understand that. There are emergent things that are going to come out of it when it's not just one or two males or females acting this way uh, and not being grown-ups. Um, but I, I think you are. I think you are. I have to challenge you there. Sorry. Uh, I think you are wrong about what it means to be a grown up. <clears throat> Educate me, sir. Because the implication there is that grown ups would behave differently, uh, and I'm not talking about children. <laughs> Shanna is not talking about children. We're talking about people who. Uh, by any measure, except the artificial measure that you seek to impose, would be considered adults. These are grown folk. These are grown folk, but let's not let's not get all semantic ab about things because I think that you would accept that we can easily metaphorically use language like that guy over there is an adult. He's, he is a man in the technical sense, but we would accept that he doesn't act like a man. He's immature, and that calling him a boy is legitimate within the language. Again, you, you seek... I'm guilty of this myself, and I'm, I'm a simple, attempting to preserve your integrity where mine has already long been, been shattered and, and destroyed. Uh, it, is the, it is the majority mm -hmm. that unfortunately determine the color, the nature, 
the smell, the character, is not the minority. And the majority of men in our society have adopted a certain set of behaviors mm -hmm. that they are passing on to succeeding generations of men in our society, just as it was passed on to them from preceding generations of men in our society. Okay, so let's say that I concede that. Will you give me that they're immature? I would give you that they are immature by your narrow definition of immaturity. That's my point. My point is, they don't think that they are immature, and the society that they have bred mm -hmm. does not think that they are immature. Yeah, well... The f and, and, and the only reason that you assert their immaturity mm -hmm. is because you have a specific set of beliefs based on the way you were raised, based on the way you were taught, <laughs> That are I, re I, I really can't believe you're going here. That are and I, and odds. First of all, I just want to note that, that I really want to get back to Shauna here, right? But yeah. I have to address this. I cannot believe that you are going down the route of, of uh, laying out. No, no, you're, you're laying out. I'm o I only think that because of my beliefs and my context, etc., etc., right? No. That... No. No, no, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you are uh, you are isolated from reality. I'm saying that, that your assertions reflect the views of a minority. And that that minority, however, whatever my personal judgment on their rightness or wrongness of view, that is a minority. And the majority are the ones who determine what the culture is. I, will say I don't dispute that. I don't know why you came in with that. I don't see the relevance to my point. The fact no, that I, I call him a boy or the fact that I call him immature is irrelevant to the point that he does not act in a fuller capacity in which he should to have a stable society that allows for, one, the blossoming of all persons, regardless of their gender or uh, orientation or anything else. And number two, um, okay, your laugh just threw me off, but the, the, the point is that, and I, I, I am not changing his view, the actions that I see out there are immature. There may be mechanisms in place that are incentivizing particular behaviors, right? The fact that I believe what I believe and that I'm in the minority is by the by. The fact that we have reference points, and whether you believe us from the Bible or the church culture that has come out of it in a particular context, or philosophy, or the writings of people of the past, or current cultures, right, means that we have reference points. If they don't have the reference points, that is also irrelevant to my argument. The fact is that they are not as full beings as they could be, which is true for all of us, but is especially true in my view of this particular set of people that we're talking about. And we're mostly talking about males, but the females are immature as well, right? And I could say that as someone who has uh, been isolated from this for some time in a very happy marriage, but also because I'm not as young and dumb as I used to be, right? So I'm not blaming them. I'm trying to outline what I see from a 30,000 foot view, which necessarily does not have the resolution of being up front in front of somebody knows where you can see all this not coming out there. Does that make sense? Or am I just like, am I insane? No, you guys are looking at me I, like I'm no, insane. No. I, the, only, the only thing I have to add is just because you don't know you're immature doesn't mean that you're not immature. That's my only thing. And, and what I am saying is, mm -hmm. You are both now, because if you are 
see, saying that you agree with what Matthew has mm -hmm. said, uh, you are ascribing to yourselves the ability to determine what is and what is not maturity, number one, and, and you are also uh, deciding <laughs> you, Please finish because I, I have I have to. I wish you could see Matthew right now. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, he, like he just pulled out he just pulled out both his long sword and his dagger, and he is rare to go right. Um, but that's fine, right? You are you are ascribing to yourselves the power to determine what is and what is not maturity and appropriate behavior for an entire community of adults who have adopted a, 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 a type of behavior that is, as far as they are concerned, natural and the simple order of how things are. Correct and incomplete. Okay? What you have said from my point of view, is not wrong within a particular context. But when you say, for instance, uh, we are ascribing to ourselves, and I'll just talk for myself, that we have the power to blah, 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 right? I have the power to reason out and proffer my argument, right? And this is my argument. Mm -hmm. This is my position. Yes. I'm not saying it's absolute truth. And when I get better evidence, I'll update. Okay? So, I am not claiming that I have the power to not just determine as objectively as possible what the state is or should be, rather than having the power to then put that on people. But the way that you worded it makes it seem as if I believe that I have the power to push it on to the to people. Now, am I putting the ideas out there and expecting them, some people, to take it up and argue it through in their own head? Yes. Yes, I am. However, I'm not seeking to be like, to go out there with a bludgeon and whap some people up. Okay? I can't remember the second one when you made me take my saber out the first time. I mean, <laughs> uh, because... But 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 you are you are you are ascribing things to us without what? particular nuance. I am. Yes, you are. What? But may I may I? Am I am ascribing, or am I just okay? Go ahead. Sorry, yeah, please. I apologize. Uh, I forget what this is called an analogy. Maybe that's the correct term. If let's just say there's a community in which there is quite a bit of poverty. There are families, but there's quite a bit of poverty. And part of the reason for the poverty is that each family, each couple has a large number of children. And an outsider comes and says, hey, why don't I introduce you to family planning as an option? And so in that, you might later on see that the parents are having less children over time, the kids grow up, they have a more manageable number of children. And so even in that, there are some other things that might allow that community to flourish more because there's less strain, less mouths to feed, less whatever. Okay? So that's not, that's not necessarily an imposition on an assumption um, but more so of a, hey, this could be a solution to a very real issue. Take it or leave it. Well, but then it's also, as I was saying, at the, at the society level, right, there are other issues that emerge. I want to come to so the it's, example. It's not mm -hmm. just about <clears throat> speaking to one person and them accepting it or disregarding it, right? Coming back to the, to the question of do politicians really have power, right? I don't know where this idea comes from. 
But some people in our society seem to think that power is just one thing. And it only manifests itself in one way. Sure. The fact is that we can be powerful in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it boils down to the physics of it, which is that power is about how much energy flows in a given amount of time, which means you could get X done in Y time. If you could lift this table and throw it across the harbor, in a minute, that's a set level. If I could do it in half a minute, I have twice the power. If politicians can incentivize things and put in policies, which is their entire Job. supposed mm -hmm. bloody point, mm -hmm. then yes, they have power. Mm -hmm. If a woman can say, this is the standard if you want to sleep with me, that's, mm -hmm. power. that's power. If a man could say, if you don't sleep with me, your children ain't going to whatever private school, no conch snack for you, etc., etc. That's power. Different types of power, but it's still power. As you stare at me, I realize I'm not sure if I even made a point there. <laughs> However, <laughs> what I'm going to say to you is that A, I realize that you've done a really good job at purposefully riling me up. And secondly, I am not going to enter this arena without a notepad the next time, sir. Next time. Because you, you, you got me on the back foot on this one. But I tell you what. For the record, I would like to say very clearly, I did not intentionally rally you up. What you, what you said struck me as incorrect. And I made my point. And you have made yours in response. That is, that is all that has happened, sir. Uh, to come back to you, Shannon, and this, I think, is part of my challenge with what Matthew said. Mm -hmm. In the example that you gave, this community is existing. Mm -hmm. They live in, they have a nature, and mm -hmm. they're doing whatever they're doing. Right? It is you coming, well, not you personally, but yes. whoever this is exactly. coming in as an outsider and saying, if you made different decisions, you could have a different outcome. Yeah. And that that outcome would be quantitatively and qualitatively better than what you have now. Mm -hmm. What if I'm not an outsider? What if I lived in there and I went away to school and I came back? Then you, and are, I bringing, realized you are bringing that. an external point of view to a, a closed community mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you cannot expect anything but resistance even if your idea is a, a demonstrable good, even if it is absolutely bad. You are acting, you are acting as if this is not a set of ideas that previously existed here. Right. It's I'm true. Not. You are. You are. You are acting as if this society has not been exposed to if not experience, a more cohesive yeah. family unit, a better moral code, mm -hmm. and uh, a, a more mature, if less educated, populace mm -hmm. in the past. Again, you and this maturity judgment that you are okay. making. Yes, it is. Take that word out of <laughs> No, no. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm going to defend this. because of you are. But but can you defend it uh, when when we're done talking to Shannon? Sips. <laughs> Whiskey. Painfully. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Crown Royal, thank you for your smoothness and for bringing such smoothness back to our wonderful conversation with the great Shanna Edgecombe. Uh, Shanna, are boys in the Bahamas uh, ready? Are, are men in the Bahamas, like, by and large, are they ready? Ready is such a wide, general... Let me put it like this. I have a... a Tell them, Shana. I have a <laughs> number of uh, girlfriends who swear to the heavens 
uh, or to quote one of them in particular, I swear for love. Uh, I have no idea. I think she's saying I swear before love or swear before the Lord. I can't mm -hmm. can't figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. But she says that, and they all seem to believe they can't find a good man in their age group in this country. What what age group are they in? We're talking anywhere from twenty nine thirty up to the fifties. Mm -hmm. They swear. Mm -hmm. All the good men are either taken mm -hmm. or not here. Because what is here just ain't cutting it. Now, you as an outspoken, direct, uh, single Bahamian woman mm -hmm. uh, are going to stand in for all of them <laughs> uh, in, this, in this moment Proxy. in time and, and tell me uh, these dudes are too lousy or is that is, tell me, what's the deal? I know some. Matthew's men. face is, is useful. I know some good men. Uh huh. So I'm not going to say every man is lousy. I know some good men. Ladies um, and gentlemen, she's looking at Matthew and myself. I just wanted to, <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to clarify that. Please, I, I do know some good men, mm -hmm. um, and I know that those good men are in different places in life, whether it be they are actually already in relationships, or they are working on themselves and they're not interested, um, or they keep to themselves. That's what happens a lot of times. If they don't already know you or are introduced to somebody by someone that they know or trust, you might not get to know them, but they are good men. So that begs a question. I'm sure someone will ask me, well, if you know good men or great men, why don't you have a good or great man? Um, for the men that I know, I see them as either my like real for real friends or they're like my little brothers. So I can't even go there anyway in my mind. Um, I will say that good men are out there. I will say that good women are out there. The problem is that a lot of us don't run into each other enough. Um, I will also say that maybe there are mismatched expectations. Because sometimes we have this thing of someone has to look a certain way, be a certain way, be at a certain place in life. And we might run across someone, but they don't fit some photo or some list that we have. I'm not saying no have a list. I'm just saying what's on the list is the question. I'm not saying no have a preference, but are you open to moving away from your preference is the question. Um, yeah, so I, I think that matches are out there. Now, generally speaking, are the Bahamian men ready? Um, it's a challenge. I'll put that mildly. It's a challenge. If, as we established at the beginning of this conversation, mm -hmm. Bahamian women are really the ones who are, quote unquote, in charge of the society. They're the ones leading the dance, so to speak. I need clarification here. Okay. Is that what Shana was saying, or was she simply passing on the sentiment that was on Instagram? I and I agree to an extent um, that some that we do hold the power when it comes to sex. Generally. When it comes to yeah. sex, yeah. Okay, but they, yeah. but their, just so that I understand, mm -hmm. their position was that that's the only thing that counts. No. no. You, 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 not only thing that counts. I'm asking her. It was, oh, based on the Instagram? It was. <laughs> the Instagram <laughs> is only relevant insofar as I brought up the question. Yeah, it was to set the stage. So, yes. to deal with Matthew and his mistress, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
what what we agreed was that women, Bahamian women, have a position of power in the community at large, whether or not in every instance that is because the men in the community are uh, in search of sex. Uh, or, as I said, Grammy is in charge of every family, and this is a matriarchal society. Right? The women of the Bahamas run the show. E even in politics, where, where men dominate in positions of power, you can't get into power without women. You cannot be elected. You, you probably okay, can't, even so, get a, you so can't even get a nomination. They, they have power, but it is not that oh, men sorry. don't have power. Yeah. <laughs> it's Giving Barbie. I just watched it. I'm sorry. I just watched that movie. Lord have mercy in your infinite wisdom. That was something. But we don't live in Barbie land. To be clear, I haven't watched Barbie, but I want to. Please don't. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> the review is in. But in Barbie land, <clears throat> the cans are pushed to the side. They are not important. They are accessories. The Barbies run Barbie land. And sorry for those of you who did not watch it and want to. They think that in the real world, quote unquote, on earth, where we are, that it's the same thing and barbie ends up stereotypical barbie as she's called because there's different types of barbies she ends up coming to the real world and realizes that it's actually backwards that men have more of the power shift and the women are deal with more stuff and so she's devastated because she thought the world was perfect and you are suggesting that we in the Bahamas mm -hmm. live in Barbie land. No, I'm suggesting you're you're making it out to sound almost like we live in Barbie land and that's not the case. But from a man's perspective, it might appear that way. Maybe. I'm not a man. But I can just tell you from a woman's perspective, I can't explain to you all the little nuances and ways to show us in some ways that we're not in power. Yeah, I, 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 agree. I agree with that. I, I, and I, I'm not suggesting that the argument is as reductive and as simplified mm -hmm. as my assertions might seem. Mm -hmm. uh, for the purposes of conversation and an interview, good God, <laughs> where would I get that idea? Matthew was excited to talk to you because uh, he thought you had a particular uh, insight, uh, well, not necessarily even insight, but just a particular view mm -hmm. on, on the dating and relationships. Yeah. Uh, uh, particularly, I think, coming from the perspective of being a Christian woman mm -hmm. in a, an increasingly secular Bahamas. Uh, so... Secular world. I, I, we don't live in the world, we live in the Bahamas. So, <laughs> at the Bahamas area. Speak so, for yourself, sir. So... <laughs> So that's, that's where I'm going now. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew uh, has laid out a wonderful uh, buffet for us. And so now it is time for us to get to the main court. Right. Shannon. It's going to be painful. Mm -hmm. You're a Christian girl. Yes. You're a woman of God. You're born again. Sir, I must object. This is a woman, by her own argument, there's no way that we could come in here. I return it to you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Christian woman. He got you back. A woman of God, mm -hmm. born again, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. fire and miracles, and all the all the appropriate uh, accoutrements that are, mm -hmm. accompany a good uh, conversion and. Uh, Indwelling and infilling story, right? Mm -hmm. Good. It's just like fire shut up in your bones. Mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless, you are a single woman of uh, 
marriageable, dateable age. Uh, what's it like for a Christian woman on the uh, on the dating scene in Nassau? It's very painful with a W. It's very painful. Very painful. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, why? As it has been so um, explained to me, and from what I've heard and read and seen, a lot of Christian men, if they are actually Christian, do not or are not interested in dating other Christian women. And so, that is problem number 5,803 as to why that is a challenge. Ouch. So, instead of say less, say more. But before you do, yeah. uh, I see Matthew uh, with his nose in the, uh, the Crown Royal. Uh, it, it, Filling myself with the unholy spirit. Well, I mean, you know, this is the Sunday Scotch Society. Uh, all manner of spirits are entertained in this in these conversations. I know about that, but uh, okay. I, I didn't say in this conversation. I said in these conversations. Okay. Uh, but Matthew, having had some time to let it sit and, and uh, open up. What are your thoughts on, on, on Mr. Crown? Is is this a is this a parable scotch or a whiskey? Well, it falls um, almost more on the dessert side for me. It's quite it's quite sweet. The toffee is uh, is really the, the biggest part of the finish for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, I kinda Maybe with cheesecake. Ooh, yeah, I think this would be great with cheesecake. Mmm. Yeah. Right, that looks like it made were you were water. you to recommend something uh, this to your one of your girlfriends who mm -hmm. does drink? Mm -hmm. What would you pair it with? Or tell them to do so. I don't really eat cheesecake, so, but I don't know why it came to mind. Maybe cheesecake. Y'all would have to decide. I could also, I mean, obviously every whiskey goes with like a hearty red meat, like the steak or, or uh, even something like venison. Buffalo, or you know, something, something gamey. Um, maybe even duck, um, goose. You know, something really gamey and heavy um, for for the dessert. Cheesecake for sure. Uh, I would see this with a fruit pie. Mm. You know, mm. uh, no, no, I meant a fruit pie, like. Uh, whether it's apple, whether it's pear, whether it's peach, whatever. You know. okay. I think it would be really good. Um, but yeah, this is, this is... I had a... So in, in, in college, my music theory teacher uh, was uh, an Episcopal uh, minister and a music minister. He, uh, Bill McConnell, I'm talking about you. Um, he used to, we, we used to run into each other in the liquor store, um, cause, and he would drink his, he would buy his Crown Royal, and I would be in the liquor store buying my scotch, whatever scotch I was drinking that week. And it was hilarious, because, you know, of course, you gotta rub the nose and pretend like, hey, I didn't see you, and you didn't see me. Um, because I was the bass section leader at the church choir, you know, doing my 
ended up seeing. It was, it was just really funny. Um, but Bill was the one who turned me on to, to Crown Royal. Because one, one day I was like, what is this? Why does he keep... Because I didn't... I'm not a blended whiskey fan. Mm -hmm. And well, I wasn't at the time. And and, so, and I had my nose turned up, really snooty, about the Crown Royal, and then I was like, because it was a blended whiskey. Mm -hmm. and then when I tried it, I was like, oh, I get it now. Mm -hmm. This is good stuff. So back to you, Sean, and yes. these dudes. Um, the dudes. The, the painful, the very painful <laughs> dating scene in the Commonwealth of uh, the Bahamas for a good Christian girl like yourself. Um, I, I really want you to tell me what what makes it so painful. Yeah. Um, well, like the first reason I said, and let me unpack a little bit of what the reasons might be that I've seen or was given. One is that there's almost this sense of, to some of them, women have been out there, they've done these things, and then they decide, okay, I'm gonna wash myself clean, I'm gonna start again, and now I have all these standards and these rules. And now, you know, and they're thinking, okay, but the men before me didn't have to deal with any standards and rules, so why all of a sudden do you have standards and rules? Um, and I have to play by that. And then if there is abstaining happening, then it's, oh, you want to make me wait, but you want to make them other dudes wait. So that's a thing. That could be a thing. I, I, I hope this does not derail your train of thought, but I just want to look at Matthew and say, see, sex is everything. Please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing is, you know, Again, I've also been told that some of them would prefer to bring a woman into the church from the world, quote unquote, because it's easier. It's easier. She'll go along with whatever, or she can be molded, or she won't have that deep of a relationship with God herself, or it's, yeah. There's also that. Mm -hmm. And these are Christian men. They would rather, you know, kind of take her to church and help her get cleaned up than meet someone there. And we're not going to explore the psychology of that at all. <laughs> are we? Not on this episode. Not but, on this episode. But <clears throat> there's Jeez. definitely... There's, there's many a, questions. There are definitely many questions that I that I have there. I'm sorry, but that's evil. That's that's manipulative and evil. That is that's almost ugh, that makes me oh, very. Oh, wait, your reaction suggests to me that you are not much exposed to this type of behavior. I grew up in church. When I say it's evil, I'm not talking in ignorance. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just want to be clear. When I say it's manipulative, I'm not talking in ignorance. I've watched that manipulation happen. Yeah. Um, I've even... At the highest level. Yeah. Mm. I've even had one say to me that, and I don't believe this is their, their opinion anymore, that they would rather their significant other not hear from God for herself. Oh, whoa. There's that. Um, there's any manner of things. There's also, um, you know, a form of godliness is a real thing because in the church in general, men and women, we are okay with doing foolishness until we step into church on Saturday or Sunday. And then we act like we weren't just doing whatever. A lot of it is a facade. 
a lot of it is just religion, not relationship with God. So let me let me let me put to you mm -hmm. um, a a new foundation for the conversation. Mm -hmm. We are a heavily churched community. The last thing we are is a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. We would not know what Christian nation meant if it walked up to us and slapped us in the face. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of us who go to church believe that that is the action of going to church is in and of itself sufficient to lay claim to the to the moniker of either Christian or Christian nation. The idea that we are expected to live up to or live next to the the tenets of Christianity, biblical Christianity, uh, it, I think is is laughable uh, when you look at what happens in church, especially when you look at what happens among the pastoral class, right? I mean, how many times do you hear people talk about the sweetheart, you know, the wife and children in one pew, and the sweetheart and their children in the next pew, and everybody know who is who. And everybody know how to whatever, right? You, you, how often do you hear stories about pastors who have uh, alternative lifestyles on the down low? You know, whether that's they sex in every single gal in the church or they sex in every single boy in the church, whatever the case may be, right? It, it, so, if you as a good, and, and I use the word good Christian girl in Keep quotation marks, uh -huh. that, um, and, and what I mean by that is someone who's genuine in their in their belief in, and, and genuinely trying to live, mm -hmm. you know, a, a Christian lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, it it must be both infuriating and frustrating trying to maintain that standard of integrity and holiness and righteousness and whatever else when. The person next to you, who's supposed to be running the same race you run, is is not, uh, and and getting the same uh, reward that you're getting, or more, or, so or more, yeah. so or so it appears. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've definitely had those conversations with God, and the same way that I speak frankly with people, I speak frankly with Him, because He already knows how I feel. I've had those conversations and I've had, I've said, hey, hey now, <laughs> you know, not that I'm doing these things because I expect this reward, but I feel convicted um, that I should be doing certain things and I should not be doing certain things. But yet there are people who live as though they have no convictions and they are appearing to excel, whether it be in business, career, Personally, they might be getting married, they might be in a relationship, they might be having kids, um, they might have more money, they might whatever, more visibility, whatever it is. Um, and I have had to learn that I can't keep my eyes on them. This me and God. That's not, it's easy to forget sometimes. It's easy to look around, you know, there were points in the Bible, not to get like really biblical, but there were parts in the Bible when the Israelites were walking and they were walking through territories where the people had a lot of stuff. They had things. And God literally said, you don't look to the left or the right. You keep your eyes straight ahead so that you don't get distracted. And it's very easy for us to get distracted. Is it frustrating? Absolutely. You know why? Because... It's hard to explain to someone who is struggling with their faith that, or it's hard to encourage them who is struggling with their faith that they need to keep at it. When they see someone who is on the pulpit or they see someone who is a leader and they see that person who appears to have 
a whole lot, whatever version of a lot is, and they do a foolishness when they come out of church. It's hard. If you don't have that personal conviction and relationship with God, you will get tripped up. It's frustrating when you see people who lay in hands on and you know that at home or outside, they are acting crazy and making God seem like some fictional character because how could you be representing a good God? So I understand that. That's more my frustration, not, oh, well, the people doing whatever and they seem to have more than me. No, it's the people who are contending and struggling for their faith, but then they're looking around like, well, doggone it, I might as well join them. Yeah. And I'd like to tie that back as we round the, uh, the 300 yard line. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are now crossing into the final hundred meters. Yes, I said yards and then meters. Deal with it. Uh, I'd like to tie that back to our initial conversation about relationships. Yeah. Right. Um, and one of the things that I think is so key in this conversation is the concept of integrity. Uh, being able to articulate for yourself what you believe and then acting on whatever that might be uh, in a way that is consistent and sustained and sometimes you know there's, there's a philosophical debate to be had about whether Judeo-Christian uh, ethics and morals are somehow superior to other ethics and morals and so on and so forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we can have that chat and, uh, another time, right? When we have a, uh, a Baha'i or a Muslim or whatever the case may be, we can have a conversation about that. But the, the question, the last sort of last-ish question for you is, what is it that you think is the most important thing for a person in who is looking to be involved in a relationship, looking to date, mm -hmm. what's the most important thing for them to do? Oh gosh, I would have a top five, not most important. <laughs> okay, fine. Give me, <laughs> give me a top five. Top five is know why you even want to be in a relationship. You know why you want to be with someone. Is it coming from a healthy place or is it coming from you want to use this person as a fixer or a distraction or, you know, trauma bonding is real. Mm -hmm. um, don't do that <laughs> with what someone. What if you just think the person is incredibly sexy? And you think that that's a basis for a relationship? Don't do that either. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I do. Um, that's not too sexy idea. for my shirt. Okay, uh, so number two. Number two, I would say know yourself. Know yourself. Know what you need and don't be shy about what you need, what you want, where you see yourself in the future. And that way, you, in a sense, have a list of requirements that you're looking for um you know it's as simple as you know if you love to travel and you meet someone and they say i don't even have a passport like i'm not interested in traveling i don't think it's important y'all probably aren't compatible just off that alone depending on how important travel is to you number three i would say it's kind of like don't go shopping in the food store if you're hungry because you might pick up anything. You might be liable to give in to your cravings. What you see and you like, you pick that up and you put it in your car. Don't get out there and be thirsty or be hungry because you will make decisions out of your flesh. Um, 
and then you'll think and get the consequences later. Number four, do I have a number four? Uh, I would say... I mean, we arbitrarily picked a top five, so... I did arbitrarily pick it. I would say, you know... You know, what I was saying is you don't have to go past this. If that's, slack in. Your, mm -hmm. No, I would say I have five, probably. It's, it's easy to have more, but I would say mm -hmm. slack in kind of what you're... Don't expect perfection. Mm -hmm. And I've had to learn this. Don't expect... For the record, I'm perfect. Perfection. <laughs> Meaning, we'll work on that. Give allowances to the Thank other you. person. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> the way that you need allowances. The same way you need grace, the other person will need grace as well. Number five. What if I don't need grace? What if I'm perfect? What if you're perfect? Yeah. Well, then that person's going to need grace to deal with you because you think you're perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Number five, my top five lists. What else would I add to the list? If someone were to line up, if you were to write down everything that you want on one side of a paper, and then you write down what you can offer that person, make sure that it is kind of equal. Meaning, if you want someone who's financially stable, perhaps you should be driving, striving to be financially stable. If you want someone who is, I don't even know, like who is, can give you, you know, stimulating conversation, then that means that they probably need stimulating conversation too. So you need to work on that. Things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Matthew? <clears throat> and as the men them, and the women friends tell me, smile more. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> what musical is that from? Hamilton, Smile More. Yeah. I don't know. You didn't see Hamilton? I'm sorry, I just broke your heart. No, it's not that my heart is broken. I'm excited because... This is an opportunity for me to tell you. You have to see Hamilton. It is people absolutely worth it. Yes. People have told us all that. Thank you. Does that mean that I will? Just remember, Shana, you're in the minority. I'm in the minority. That's true. Matthew is salty. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, sir. But I don't care. <laughs> uh, no, seriously. As expected. Seriously, uh, Hamilton was like, I took Maya and Suzette to see it. And Maya, well, it would be truer to say Maya took us to see it. Mm -hmm. Because she and her bestie, Kaylin, uh, like a year before, like the, the year it came out, all of a sudden they knew every song in the show. And this was the first like Broadway show that I'd seen Maya do this with. And so I kind of quietly bought tickets for her birthday, That's and nice. I took her to see wow. in, in, in New York on her birthday. And so she's sitting in the theater, and when the lights go down, mm -hmm. she starts to literally vibrate. <laughs> Segment. <laughs> and she vibrated and sang that whole show from beginning to end, yeah. uh, and it was magnificent. It was so much fun. Um, and the show itself is really good. It's okay. a really good show. I'll put it on my list. Yeah. There's a, the char there's a character, you know, King George, uh, is when you see King George, you will know that that's me. Okay. No good. <laughs> anyway. And on that maddening note. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Well. It has been a pleasure coming into your ears. As I take I, the last sip of this. I think Matthew might be. You, sir, have a terribly dirty mind. We are talking about relationships. <laughs> right? And, and, and our opening premise was that sex rules the world. No. So. That I want to register 
that I disagree with that premise. <laughs> The Crown Royal, uh, the Deluxe, uh, was a delightful uh, tipple. I am thoroughly, thoroughly happy uh, that we, we, we chose that for today's episode. Uh, it was a good blend of whiskey that represents a good blend of conversation. I'm, I'm pleased, I'm pleased. Uh, Shana, uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity to say any last words that you wish to works for me. <laughs> Matthew? <clears throat> Once again, it's been a pleasure. Um, I look forward to uh, Crossing Swords. Once again, in the near future, with my great co-host, uh, Kate Quincy Parker. Thanks for having me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, you know we had a good time. You know we love you. Uh, okay, folks, that's it. We'll see you next time.